am i right so of dose and dosing interval we will be winding up today uh, and um, our plan for this week um, saturday and sunday is to complete this chapter okay so um, i i may not be able to schedule um, um, tomorrow or day after tomorrow because uh, i will be occupied with the third year but uh, on saturday and sunday we will um, take the required class of classes to complete this chapter is that okay with everyone so this is the plan for this week yes sir okay so um, in the last class coming to this chapter in the last class we had discussed about determination of dose right uh, what are the factors major factors that influence the determination of dose and then we also talked about uh, talked about uh, the c max c minimum and c average okay and the therapeutic window and, and uh, we told uh, the reliability of each of these parameters in deciding the dose am i right like how heavily you can depend on c minimum or how lightly you can depend on c minimum or c maximum and how heavily you can depend on c average to um to adjust the dose and um, so that these parameters give you the picture of serum concentration of drug am i right yeah and what are queries and uh, when after highlighting some of the disadvantages of c max and c minimum we made a point that c average is uh, is most often used for dose calculation and we discussed uh, uh, did we discuss the advantages of using c average in the last class Did you discuss? No, sir. No, sir. We didn't. Okay. Okay. So I think we do discuss the disadvantages of C minimum and C maximum, right? Uh, yeah. I remember in the whiteboard I was giving you the example of um, um, the different values of C C minimum and C maximum, and how um, and and the average average of that two number, and we saw that though the C minimum and C maximum. Uh, can be the combination of various numbers various values uh, but the average can still be same you remember yes sir yeah and if you just um, uh, just adjust the dose based on c max or c minimum will not be ideal because c max a uh, c minimum may give you okay it is very low and it, uh, um, and you may uh, give a patient more dose but um but um, that that may not reflect a clear picture of um, required concentration because c max is temporary we know c max and c minimum are but, uh, for a for a transient period of time but c average is something that um, that is what is meant for for long period of time and that is what gives us the therapeutic effect than c max and c minimum isn't it yes okay so um we'll, the, this is the reason why we don't heavily depend on c max and c minimum we uh, we often use c average to do, do the dose calculation and the advantage is that as a told helps in design, deciding the therapeutic drug label okay and um, it fluctuates less as i told unlike c max and c minimum c average doesn't have because the c because it's average of Two values, so it doesn't fluctuate as we saw in the uh, last last examples in the in our whiteboard that um, the uh, the hundred could be the average of uh, various combination of two number, maybe twenty five and seventy five, maybe um, hundred and hundred, maybe. So you can see twenty five and hundred is there is a far gap. Okay, so there is a, a very big fluctuation happening over there. In the uh, we use C average, there is less fluctuation. Okay. And um, um, that is why we depend on C average, and we can increase the dose proportionally based on C average um, if, uh, to keep the C average constant. So this is an assumption, important assumption, that we we consider C average, and based on C average, we um, if C average is low. We assume that we need to increase the uh, dose to maintain the. Um, C average in the in the therapeutic window and to get the effect and we try to do it uh, and we try to maintain the C average constant by manipulating the dose and by manipulating the frequency. 
So is it, it is clear this, this, uh, important, this, is, this is important assumption uh, why uh, um, what, uh, what we assume about C average in terms of their efficacy, therapeutic efficacy and um, how we um, how we uh, manipulate the dose and dosing interval is this clear but yes, but this average yes uh, for like no, for normal medication we can use C average but for narrow therapeutic index also index drugs also can we use the C average? coming we are coming we are, we are coming to that point I will give you an example one example of narrow therapeutic index drug and one example of wide therapeutic index drug okay and then uh, oh, your okay. your this doubt would be clarified we'll, we'll take one example okay we'll take one one example uh, penicillin as a wide therapeutic index drug and um, maybe desoxin okay we'll come back to that. Uh, and, and to uh, start with this, uh, what Sri Kant asked, to start um, addressing this, uh, I will uh, have a concession sentence telling you that this doesn't apply for all the drugs, okay? This, uh, this, uh, this doesn't apply for all the drugs. This is not a general rule, um, but definitely it works uh, pretty well for some of the drugs. So let us see the drugs for which it works pretty well. For example, if the drug is diazepam, okay? And is either given 10 milligram TID, okay? 10, 10 milligram TID is how much in a day? 10 milligram TID is how much in a day? 30 milligram. 30 milligram okay. So, uh, so you can do these 50 milligram DID, and still you will have same C average, okay? So here, uh, the drug, in the case of a um, drug like diazepam, though you are making 10 milligram TID to 15 milligram TID, the C average remains same, okay? So um, we'll come back to the kinetic part of this again, uh, when you talk about uh, one, uh, as I told, when you talk, when you take the example, particular example of narrow and wide therapeutic index drug, you will see, you will see the kinetic behind this. And, um, um, you also have to keep in mind the the here what you did is you simply um, reduce the frequency and increase the dose right to to maintain the C average to, to keep the C average constant to, to keep the C average same but you should keep in mind that it only applies as long as clearance is linear what do you mean by clearance is linear Anybody, Rubaina? What do you mean no. by clearance is linear? It proportionally increases. Yes. Uh, um, generally, um, what in terms of first order, second order, we had discussed, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's if it is a first order, if it is not a zero order, if it is a like um, um, uh, first order, then then only this applies. Okay, otherwise it doesn't. And you know what are the factors that can affect the clearance? Okay, if um, like I mean to say, what are the pathological conditions that can affect the clear clearance? If the if there are many um, disorders present in a patient, then probably uh, and the disorder which can affect the clearance, maybe uh, liver disease or kidney disease, then definitely this clearance may not be uh, linear, and this may not apply. Okay, so you should be very careful when you are in what patient you are doing what kind of uh, dose and frequency manipulation. This becomes important. You cannot apply to all the patients. Um, clearance has to be linear. Okay, uh, and um, uh, you know, in the last class, when we uh, in the last chapters, when we were discussing kinetic and, and the relationship between kinetic and dynamic parameter, we had come across this, uh, this um, terminology UC by tau. Okay, so do you remember this? You know, AUC is a kinetic parameter and tau is a dynamic parameter. So uh, here, um, when, when we monitor the serum drug concentration, so, um, like when C average cannot be measured directly, but we can depend on this. Okay? When we give multiple doses, or is a duration. Okay, how frequently you are giving the, that time okay that time duration is the tau and you see you know what that's the area under curve uh, and this is again giving a picture of amount of drug 
um, on amount of drug uh, in the blood. Okay. And I think this is the point, uh, very important point, very important point that um, you might have read in your last year kinetic also. C average is simply not the arrhythmic, arrhythmic average of C minimum and C max. Okay. And, and if you have understood this, you will understand many of the kinetic concept, um, kinetic uh, concepts which are related to dynamic, and you can understand it better. For example, if if you remember in last class in whiteboard, I was explaining, I was simply doing uh, arithmetic average. Arithmetic average means I was simply adding the two values, that is C, in the, the values of C minimum and C maximum, and I was dividing them by two to get the average. But you have to keep in mind, it's not simply the arithmetic average of C max and C minimum. Okay, why? Because the serum concentration declines expon exponentially. Okay, the, while you are calculating this, the serum concentration also declines, uh, uh, gets in, in the decreasing order. And this is very nicely explained in your kinetic last, last year, okay? Um, and uh, wh why you should not, uh, if you consider it to be a simple arithmetic, um, average, then what kind of problem you can have? And um, there is a there is very nice concept explained in them. Uh, I think when you had done your experiments in kinetic last class last year, that time also you might have come across this uh, sentence that C, C average and C max is not simply arithmetic average okay, because serum concentration declines arithmetic, uh, exponentially. Um, the dosing interval must be selected uh, when considering the elimination half life of the drug. Okay, so this is again the dictum that we have been um, uh, that that this concept we have from very old time. There's nothing new that we look at the elimination half life of a drug to to fix the dosing interval. Okay, um, because if uh, because if you don't look at patient may suffer from um, subtherapeutic um, loss of effect or higher Toxic effect. Okay, so now we'll based on this fact, based on the um, elimination half life, how we adjust the dosing interval. Okay, um, we'll see the example. Okay, we'll see the example. Here we see, we are now we are seeing the example of PC, the elimination half life and dosing interval. How based on elimination half life we are fixing the dosing interval. Here you saw how we manipulate the frequency. Okay. Um, Manipulating the dose, okay. But here we'll see the, how we are manipulating the frequency or interval based on elimination half life. Here, let us see the example of diazepam, whose uh, average concentration, the required concentration in the blood is um, uh, in, um, like the required concentration is achieved when you give 10 milligram TID. Okay, 10 milligram TID is. 30 10 milligram TID is 30 mg, yes. Uh, or, or, 30 mg. or if you give 60 milligram every other day, that means in a two day you are giving 60 milligrams. That's again a 30 mg per day, right? Yes. It's again a 30 mg, uh, isn't it? So, the C max letter dose uh, regime, letter means we are talking about 60 mg. Okay? So the C max of the of this 60 mg every other day would produce a C max several times larger than the than, than this 10 mg. Do you agree with that? Because you are giving yes, sir. We are looking at C max, not C S S. Those those C average is both in same cases when you dose a patient 10 and 10 mg TID that is 30 milligram in a day or 60 mg every other day that is 60 mg in two day that means 30 mg per day. So these are two different regimen. Though both the regimen is uh, uh, able to achieve the same C average, but but uh, when we look at the C max, the C max uh, of a dose when you give it 60 mg will be a lot higher than C max of 10 mg. You agree that, right? Yes. Yes. So um, uh, so in general, if a drug has relatively wide therapeutic in this drug, okay. Uh, and because you know, um, in, you can take any drug in. Um, uh, now coming back to, to again, um, Srikanth question: you know, If it is a uh, wide therapeutic in this drug and narrow therapeutic, how to do? So if it is a wide therapeutic in this drug, okay. So now we are generalizing the things, okay. We are making kind of a rule, 
Okay. Again, this is not for 100 percent, but it but it follows, but it applies for most of the condition. In general, if you are coming across any white therapeutic index drug, okay, uh, or like like a diazepam, okay, white therapeutic index drug, and which have relatively longer half life, okay, then you have lot of flexibility to manipulate the dose and dosing interval, like we saw here. We had a flexibility of putting a uh, patient three times per day, okay, of NMC. And from there, you, you got a flexibility to do a 60 MC every other day also in, in 60 MC in the two days. So it's really a big flexibility that you had, isn't it? Are you following me? Hello? 